made it pretty far, all things considered. Thanks for your applause. Still, every time I close the door and another won't open, I get this panic that my life is now on pause. The dark gets cleared, the board's been cleaned, there's nothing left on my screen. The plate is empty, so it seems. Now is the time to ask, okay, what's next? This was fun while it lasted, nothing comes to you ask it. So I'd really like to know what's next. Potential till my eyes finally close. But I got time, got years and years work to do. But I got fears, and there's a ringing in my ears. So still, I gotta ask, okay, what's next? This was fun while it lasted. Nothing comes to you to ask it. So I'd really like to know what's next. morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you may be in this beautiful planet of ours. The sun is shining, that bright orb in the sky. This is Metaphysical Mocha Mondays. I am your host, Mark Lanehart, the Intuitive Prospector. Thank you for being here this morning. Yeah, that's, I might pull my blinds down. Let me uh, hold on real quick. Okay. I am back. It was literally coming right into my right into my face. So how's everybody doing this morning? I hope you had a uh, excellent weekend. Uh, I just got back from uh, a full weekend of golf. Really enjoyed being down in California. Uh, thank you to my good friends for hanging out. My buddies been friends for over 30 years. Uh, guys just golfing and bantering and uh, friendship and memories and love and um, uh, thanks to my buddy Justin for hosting in his beautiful house, hot tub and pool. Had a, just a really great time to get away and just be in nature, uh, be out golfing. Uh, even picked up a little bit of ragweed on my leg. I, I knelt down to uh, grab a golf ball uh, that was in the brush and knelt down right into some ragweed. I don't know if you've ever been, uh, it's kind of like poison ivy almost, like you have to really be careful. And it didn't look like anything. And then my whole leg just like, boom, just popped um with this ragweed so uh in the healing process of that but it was nice because there was lots of lots of wildlife out um lots of you know uh Eckhart Tolle talks about awareness is the greatest agent for change and I'm a very I'm usually a very observant very aware of my surroundings and I saw everything from ducks and geese and uh squirrels and moles uh to uh eagle to a red uh, red tip hawk um 
a snake, huge bull snake. Uh, actually, was in my buddy's garage when we got home. So, you know, it, it's really just nice to be out in nature to re-energize, if you will, and to really just connect because nature is our, is our original home. And I think sometimes we forget that. So uh, thank you for a, a lovely weekend of just uh, laughter and, and good drinks and friendship uh, and, and getting rejuvenated. Uh, so let me uh, get into today's topic. Let me just get the tabs open here so I have the right one here. Um, if you haven't joined uh, the page yet, um, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Love to have you. Let me turn my volume up here. Make sure the volume is, is okay. Uh, a few of you joined this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, see a few of you on. Uh, we'll do the Q&A cafe here um, in about 25 minutes. Uh, but I wanted to talk to you uh, about something, if I can get it open. And just so everybody knows, yes, I was late this morning. It is Mercury retrograde. Uh, actually, all the guys were um, teasing, teasing me because I'm the, I'm the spiritual guru out of the group. Um, and so uh, they tease me, but they also, you know, um, in a good, in a fun tease way, but also, you know, come to me and ask me about things. And so when I was explaining what Mercury retrograde was to one of my friends, uh, he was like, Mercury, what? Never heard of it. And so we, we talked throughout the whole weekend. And, and by the end, he he had, a, I think, a good understanding of what Mercury retrograde is. Uh, we'll be in Mercury retrograde until next week, I believe, which is the 18th. Unfortunately, it lasts about uh, 18 to 20 days. It started on my birthday. So it's been maybe it's been a rough time for you uh, based on, you know, maybe traveling. And I was traveling this weekend. So I'm always mindful to give myself more time. Uh, and here's a prime example of how when we're in retrograde, how technology just gets very fuzzy, doesn't work like it's supposed to. I was checking into my flight yesterday and I usually go through my phone and the ticket wouldn't actually populate the QR code that they scan to get on your, from your phone wouldn't populate. And so I'm trying to check in and then she's like, sorry, I need that QR code. So I had to go all the way back out, grab a printed ticket come all the way back. And by this time, the plane's already half loaded. And I'm like, gosh, am I going to get a spot for my bag? Because I carried on. Uh, I did. Uh, but it was like, as soon as I got to the podium, the damn thing lit up and I had my QR code. I'm like, seriously? And she goes, yeah, we've been having issues all weekend uh, with the technology. And so, and it's funny because usually I, when I get to the airport, I will get a printed copy. I'll get a printed copy of the ticket in conjunction with my phone on the digital version because I've had this happen before. And I was like, oh, I don't need it this time. Trust the system, trust the technology. And sure as shit, it just was like, nope, not working. Got to go back and get a paper copy. And then I get there and it lights up. And I'm like, that is a prime example of retrograde. So when we're in retrograde, you know, communications break down, um, travel plans, travel flights, travel processes break down. They always say not to sign big contracts or get into any kind of big um, projects, if you will, or if you're in a project now, take it slowly, lots of breath work, lots of, you know, transparency and communications, because there is just some, definitely something to, you know, and it was a full moon, uh, and then we're in retrograde, so a lot of intense energy all around us, and it's it's not something I always subscribe to, to be honest with you, I didn't get, I didn't start paying attention to this until I was in emergency medicine as a firefighter EMT and, and during lunar cycles, full moon lunar cycles and Mercury retrograde, fire trucks, uh, running calls, running ambulances, the ERs packed. And even down in California, I heard sirens all weekend long, heard fire trucks running calls. And I was like, yeah, Mercury retrograde. So um, I hope that you're just uh, practicing patience and that you're practicing uh, good breath work and practicing ob observing versus absorbing. Uh, which is a uh, a big part of that as well. I want to give a shout out real quick. I uh, was sent some uh, coffee and a nice coffee mug. So thank you to Misty uh, for, uh, she's one of the uh, uh, followers of the page and one of the subscribers of the page. She sent me this star tour, Jim and Patty's coffee from Portland, Oregon, and a couple bags of coffee, which I'm drinking right now. It's very very yummy. So uh, thank you, Misty, for um, contributing to Metaphysical Mocha Mondays. Um, so grab your coffee, grab your tea, take a nice big breath, move into the magic of the moment. Today, we're going to talk about how time is a flat circle and what that means. Uh, time is, is really, a re it's really irrelevant. It's, we're the only species that measures our life by time. 
And, you know, I always remind people that there is no guaranteed for the future and you can't go back and you can't change the past, even though the mind would love to do one way or the other, go to the future and plan it all out and have it all set in stone and ready to go or go back to the past and change that one thing you wish you would have done or the one thing you wish you wouldn't have done. And so um, I first heard about this um, Nietzsche's book. Uh, it's, it's called Thus Spoke Zara Thustra. Uh, where in, he wrote in several places the concept of what's called eternal recurrence. And a, eternal recurrence is the idea that because time is endless, and if we're thinking time, and again, uh, my, my watch is dead, literally, so I'm charging it right now. We literally measure our life by time. How many times you celebrate birthdays? No other species does that, right? Now, you don't see a bunch of giraffes or whales or zebras or uh, dolphins celebrating that we went around the sun one year and we celebrate our birthdays. And it's something that us, even as humans, didn't always celebrate birthdays. It wasn't until about the uh, late 18th century, early 19th century that we really started to celebrate people's birthday. And so when you go back in history, a lot of people didn't know how old they were because they didn't celebrate going around the sun every year. And so in Nietzsche's book, he, uh, he talked about um, this time being linear. And I had first heard about it in uh, the, uh, the series called True Detective. So I think it was like in episode five. And this, this is going back. This is 2012. And it was, uh, it's, based on, it's based on a serial killer. And uh, Woody Harrelson is in it. And um, uh, who else? Uh, there's a new one coming out with Jodie Foster. Um, Matthew McConaughey, Woody Harrelson. They play this true detective. And so when I heard that, time is a flat circle I went what, is, what does that mean uh, you know what it, it, you know where does that come from and so I started to do some research and it's been coming up about time time is precious uh, you know unfortunately uh, you know we are reminded of our journey and of our time here when somebody is passing over uh, you know unfortunately just had a friend um, a good friend pass over from lung cancer never smoked a day in his life and made his transition now I view death a little bit different than most because I've been through so many, um, you know, experiences that I've learned that death is not the end. Death is just a new journey. And it's literally like, I, I view it as I will see you again down the road. It's just not my time. And I, when I get in that car and take that next journey, then that's when I'll see my loved ones and my fur babies and my friends, and my colleagues. And then I just saw uh, last night that another friend of mine, um, um, I'll try to be private for namesake, uh, she had made her transition. I didn't, I didn't know she was sick, so I'm not sure of the circumstances. Uh, but it, it's just a reminder, as you get older, you start celebrating more funerals and weddings than you do anything else. And it's just a reminder of our, our own time here. And so, you know, if you, if you know who Friedrich Nietzsche is, the 19th century German philosopher um, who wrote this book uh, called Thus Spoke Zarathustra, it's about time is endless and everything will eventually repeat itself. And therefore your life will repeat an infinite number of times exactly the same way each time. Now you may not subscribe to that. And if you're new to the show, if you're, uh, I know we've got a new few, a few new subscribers that are coming over from my meetup. So welcome to my meetup followers. Welcome to my Patreon prospector followers and welcome to my intuitive uh, prospector subscribers page. These are all subscriptions that you can follow uh, based on Patreon at marklanehart.com right down here or my meetup group or my uh, internal Facebook subscribers page. It's $4.99 a month, and you, you get a lot of more inter insider stuff with my Patreon or uh, subscribers for Facebook. But if you subscribe to this show here on Facebook, thank you so much, and make sure to uh, share that out with others or contribute to get your top fan badges. When we go to the Q&A Cafe, that's what I'm looking for, star senders, badges of people that follow my work and respect the work um, and respect the energy of multiple, you know, mutual um, communications. You know, you follow, I give you a message, right? So that, that you know, is subscribing to the page. It's just, a, it's just a respecting on social media. But what he talked about, and I subscribe to this, some of you may have heard of it as reincarnation, doing things over and coming here to learn different things from different perspectives, different experiences as a man, as a woman, uh, maybe as somebody rich and famous versus uh, the next time somebody that's uh, dirt poor, uh, doesn't have anything. So his belief was this internal recurrence that time is endless. It's like this, it's, it, it's a flat circle. And that's where that term first came from. And eventually everything will repeat itself. Now, it's a work of fiction. The book, Thus Spoke Zarathustra, is actually a work of fiction. 
but it's it's structured in a series of lectures uh, delivered by this uh, person called Zara Thustra, a sage who is usually presumed to be speaking for what Nietzsche believed himself, right? So if you're not familiar with Nietzsche, uh, check him out. Um, but the eternal recurrence is a, it's, it's a highest possible formula for yay sane philosophy is really what it's saying. The best reason you should be happy to exist, even if you've given up on a spiritual afterlife, some of you may following today may not believe in heaven and afterlife, summerland. Some of you may be full atheists and believe that when we're done, we're done, we're going to the dirt, that's it. And end of story, or you want to be maybe you're an agnostic and you want belief and you want proof and you want evidence that there is something I uh, when I started down this journey, I've always been a believer. I've always believed in something bigger myself. And that's probably because I was raised in Catholicism and, and, and a philosophy of God. But over time, I started to question some of the history, some of the writing, some of the scripture, even uh, some of the validity of what I was reading. And that changed me more to a from a full believer to more of an agnostic. And then I started to have my own experiences, my own near-death experience, watching my brothers pass in the spirit world and having communications with them after the fact. So that actually changed me back to more of a believer, but in a different way, just not blindly, uh, not blind believing, but looking for scientific truth, looking for um, evidence, looking for validation that there were things that were taking place. And that's why I do what I do as the intuitive prospector day, whether it's numerology, spirituality, mediumship, psychic intuition, uh, and even now being a published author. So thank you so much to everybody. The love was overwhelming on my personal page. I don't have my, my personal page is not public anymore on the Facebook page uh, for several reasons, but I had so many people congratulate me on being published. The book <clears throat> was uh, at the beginning of the show, we had it listed. Uh, it's called it's called Between World Reflections, and it was a collaboration of co-authoring with other Best American Psychics to share our experiences, to talk about the difference. Um, I didn't contribute as much as I wanted to because of my schedule, but I was able to uh, at least contribute at least three or four chapters within the book. Uh, those books are coming. You can get them right now um, at Amazon, uh, both in digital and uh, hard copy. The Audible is being recorded uh, soon. Uh, they're, they're trying to hire voiceover actors to do the audible so i'm curious to see who's going to be my voice i asked for james Earl jones or matthew mcconaughey um, or morgan freeman or samuel L. jackson but we'll, we'll see uh, so those will be coming soon i'll have hard copies here for my in-person events uh, that i'll be autographing uh and, and signing for people that want that want that and then um you can get that online and my website uh just so you know here my website is not updated yet we will we are in the process of getting that uh, uploaded to the main page. So um, if you want to check out that book, but thank you for the overwhelming love and support of that. So it's just a reminder of, you know, <clears throat> we're talking about today um, about time as a flat circle. And I've always come to learn it in the spiritual pathway and my experiences and my education and my understanding is what we resist persists. And as soon as we face, as soon as we go into um, our pain, when we go into um, our traumas, when we go into our tragedies, and I don't say, you know, marinate on them or, um, <clears throat> you know, ignore them, quite, uh, quite different uh, in the fact that um, moving through the pain to accept the pain, to start living the life that you were here to do. If, if time is literally a flat circle and we're here, don't you want to make the best of it? Don't you want to have that that philosophy of uh, say yes to everything. Uh, you know, for me, uh, I, it was it was quite eye opening to me because out of my brothers, I thought that I would be the first to go, and that's not the case. They're both down the road in the spirit world, and I'm still here because I was always willing. I was always a risk taker. My mantra has always been: if you don't risk it, there's no biscuit. Go home, go big or go home. I was saying that on the golf course, you know, this weekend. Like I, I'm playing with guys that are obviously much better than me in golf, but I'm trying to get better. And sometimes you just got to say, you know, fuck it, just go big or go home. If you don't risk it, try new things, say yes to new things that maybe you wouldn't have, um, you know, especially if, if time turns out to be a flat circle and what we resist persists and the lesson repeats until it completes, uh, then, you know, eternal, re eternal recurrence is, is the idea that because time is endless, everything will eventually repeat itself. And therefore your life will repeat an infinite number of ways in exactly the same way each time. So it comes down to your free will. It comes down to your choice of what you want to do. <clears throat> so, you know, a natural reaction might be, 
okay, if eternal recurrence is real, let's make sure our lives are joyful and pleasant with plenty of, you know, comfortable things in our life, right? Nietzsche was not about that. To him, when he, when he wrote this, and again, this was a concept I wasn't familiar with until I started to look at metaphysics, started to look at more spiritual, and, you know, in conjunction with my education here in the, you know, the, the physical world, I started to look at different philosophies, and one of these that was Nietzsche, and, you know, his internal recurrence suggested that one should instead inspire to a higher state of being, and to seek meaning through conflict and struggle, and, you know, we're in the year of truth. We're in 2023, which in numerology is, is the number seven. If you take 20, 23 and you add it up, that's how you work with just straight up numerology. <clears throat> it's going to add up to the number seven. Now, the number seven in numerology is represented as the truth seeker. And it was Pythagoras. Pythagoras came up with this as far back, about 11,000 years that we can see as far as recorded history of numerology. And uh, Pythagoras actually realized that there was a, a correlation between numbers and music. And so we, we like to say that music and numerology are actually cousins. And the seven was his favorite number. That's why it, that term lucky number seven comes up. And so we're in the year of the seven, which is about truth. And so young Pablo said, the truth will set you free, but first it will make you comfortable, uncomfortable, sorry. The truth will set you free, but first it will make you uncomfortable. And so what Nietzsche is also talking about that time is a flat circle is if we want our lives to be meaningful and have purpose and joyful and, and, and healing and transformation, then we should aspire through free will and choice to a higher state of our being. We call it the higher selves or to ascend are some of the terms you might be familiar with and seek meaning through conflict and struggle. And I've learned a lot since my conflicts, since my struggles of death and dying. I call it the trauma, the TNT, uh, the trauma and the tragedy that blew my life up at the age of 27 to be put me here to be talking with you today. So um, conflict and struggle can put you in that uncomfortability zone, but it's the uncomfortability zone that helps you move from being the caterpillar to the butterfly. And remember, it's, it's, it's not always easy to have cut, cut, caterpillar speak with butterfly people. Right. That's why we have such, you know, different conversations with people based on their journeys, experiences, education, mindset, free will and choice. So, you know, in the book, Zan, uh, Zara Thustra uh, was lecturing to the masses, kind of like what Jesus did. It was kind of the perspective of, you know, what Jesus would lecture to the masses. And he lays out choices expl explicitly and where he says, break through to a higher plane or become the last men, quote unquote, the last men who have given up on transcendence because they have discovered happiness, but they misunderstood him completely and called back, make us into these last men is one of the many set setbacks that Zarathustra experienced. So for more sophisticated, perhaps more accurate interpretation of the ideas of Nietzsche, you might want to uh, look at um, Lawrence Hatib's essay called Time is a Flat Circle, Nietzsche's concept of uh, eternal recurrence, uh, you can just type that in. Just type in time is a, is a flat circle is a popular search word. Um, but if you do a quick search on what, what I'm talking about today, that time is irrelevant, time is an illusion, and time is a flat circle, you'll see um, that it's an, it's an expression that daily rotation, it, it has a daily rotation. is something you say uh, when a recent event is similar to something that you happened in the past. And it's it's not all that different from, you've heard the term, I'm sure, history repeats itself, or even, whoa, that was a deja vu moment. So when you say time is a flat circle, it's that same saying of history repeats itself, or Mark Twain wrote about, which I feel like we're repeating some of our history from the early 1900s, uh, pre-World War II. I've talked about this because I do feel like we're heading for more, we're going to see more of these culture wars, civil wars, world wars, uh, we're seeing mass shootings right now. We're over 200 mass shootings in the United States alone. We're averaging a mass shooting every single day now. So there's a lot of conflict in our society and in our um, psychology and our, the anthropology of us who, as a species, is very uh, violent and very conf confrontational. But through that confrontation and through that struggle and through that trauma, and I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not, you know, applauding that at all. I, I don't. I, I was impacted by my family was impacted by victims of violent crimes. My brother was shot and murdered execution style. So I can speak to this with great authority because I lived it. I've been through it, went through that struggle 
but also that struggle helped me to see different perspectives and move away from violence and to move into the higher self, knowing that time is a flat circle, knowing that history repeats itself. And like Twain said, history doesn't repeat itself exactly, but it does have a rhyme and a rhythm. And if you think about things that have happened in your life, you're like, gosh, that felt familiar. And are we supposed to remember that? Is that psychic amnesia? Is that soul amnesia? Is that the deja vu like they talk about in the matrix? Are we living in a matrix? Um, and I had one of these this weekend where I was actually talking with my two friends and, and my, my, my buddy's son at the kitchen table. And my other buddy was out cleaning his pool. And I literally was for a second went, I've had this before. Now, for me, I usually have it either as a knowing or in a dreamscape. But there was a deja vu moment. Now, I didn't bring it up for, for them. But for me, I was like, OK, this is a deja vu moment, something that, you know, was very familiar, but I just couldn't put my finger on it. So, you know, Nietzsche is, is pretty amazing. You may agree with them or you may, may not agree with them. I, like I said, we're like a spiritual buffet here. I lay things out and you can pick the cream corn or the broccoli or the cauliflower or the meat and potatoes or the apple pie. It, it's all just laid out for you to choose. And that's what Metaphysical Mocha Mondays is really all about, y'all. It's about having a cup of coffee on the morning, uh, on a Monday morning to encourage you, to motivate you, to get you to think outside the box to maybe think, um, you know, what your journey is, is your journey of, of time and the time that you have here, is it a flat circle? Does history repeat itself? Do you believe in karma? Only you can judge for yourself. Only you can decide for that. So, you know, it's, you know, it's theory is, every, is everything, you know, and like I said, I started to learn about this flat circle concept um, from, uh, the show True Detective that aired back in 2012. Uh, I think Matthew McConaughey said that. And um, if you remember, if you've seen True Detective, you'll remember that Cole, who's played by Matthew McConaughey, he illustrates the concept of a flat circle by dramatically crushing this empty beer can. So he's got this empty beer can. And if you do, um, if you do, well, this memory is false because Cohen does hold up the smashed beer can as an example of what a circle looks like. But this moment comes in a later scene when he's explaining the concept of the M theory or the M brain theory, as he calls it. And the M theory comes out in theory, theoretical physics. And it's it's currently leading the theory of everything, which there is much consensus to support this from a scientific standpoint about the best way to describe the aspects of our physical reality that are not only well beyond our ability to observe, but at the furthest frontier of what we're capable of comprehending. Think about that. Many of these ideas are so far out there and they're beyond our three physical dimensions that humans can perceive. And in the dimension of time, there are different space time continuous that they talk about. Einstein talked about this for a total of 11. Now, the interesting thing about the 11 dimensions or 12 dimensions of our time is science has shown that the brain can receive and perceive and uh, tune in to 12 different frequencies within the brain. So that's kind of interesting. So this is also supported not just by um, metaphysics and science, but also by mathematics. Mathematics, which is a universal language, tells us that, um, that you know, when we have a beer can and we crush it down, it's still that beer can, but the perception, it's now just a flat round circle. It's kind of similar to if you take a fish out of its water environment, a fish only sees in a two dimensional construct. So the fish is swimming along, I reach in and I grab it out. It's struggling and wants oxygen because the only thing that it knows is that it's fish and it needs to be in water. The same thing would apply. Now, I've brought the physical fish into my third dimensional reality. That's why it's struggling and that uncomfortability, right? And if you were to do the same thing with humans and we're now the fish in our third dimensional construct and something or someone or an experience, a near-death experience or you know something lifts me out of this body, into now a fourth dimensional, fifth dimensional construct, we're going to, we're going to flop like the fish. We're going to, you know, what we don't understand leads us to fear, but it shows you that time would not play a part in that and that everything is simultaneously happening all at the same time. Now, for some of you watching, this may be like, this may be like, whoo, over the head. I get it. Stay with it. Keep researching it. Keep following the philosophy because eventually it's going to pop. It's going to make sense to be like, oh, I see what Mark was talking about, about this three-dimensional construct of what we're in. And a lot of us that have this ability and this gift to be a psychic or to be a medium or to be uh, in tune with our intuitive, it's really tuning into other things that are happening, not necessarily in this frequency, 
but a different frequency, like a, a radio being tuned in to find your favorite radio station, right? Or the Wi-Fi that's broadcasting right now that I can't see, but that we know that it's happening because I'm here on Zoom. I'm here on the Intuitive Prospector Facebook page because of the Wi-Fi, because of the internet. So it really comes back to just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's not there. So that's why we always say three eyes in life, two to see, one to look. Um, I'll have to go a little bit over time, but the pineal gland is a whole other conversation based on our brain, based on how we receive. And if you, if you even take it one step further, the reason we have communications is because this is just a vibration. This is a chord, we call them the vocal cords. And so when I have thought and consciousness, my thoughts become my words. The words come out because of a vibration. Now, for let's say, for example, you don't have a voice, or let's say you're, you, you can't speak, or you can't hear. We have sign language. We actually can use you know, uh, different methods of sign language to communicate. And I believe as we move forward in consciousness and move into this renaissance of our roaring 20s, our communication through different platforms, whether it be it through text, through social media, through um, our smartphones, through our computers, through holograms, through mathematics, through music, is going to transcend and continue to evolve, knowing that this time is a flat circle, but it's very deep flat circle. So, um, you know, give give it a give it a chance to embrace your higher self. Uh, you know, if you um, love these kind kind of conversations, check out check out True Detective. Uh, if you like visualization for what I'm talking about today, because again, this may have just gone right over your head because I know it did the first few times I heard it. I'm like, what? You talking about you know when we're talking about a four-dimensional sphere moving from three-dimensional to four-dimensional um there's a structure of time in physical dimension but there are a few better places to actually watch this than the movie interstellar by christopher nolan who also features matthew mcconaughey and they talk about the theory of relativity they talk about um how you can move into what we call the tazarac and i've got in my bowl over here, you can't really see it, but I've got I got it at my expo a couple of weeks ago, and it, it reminded me um, of the Tazarac. And so, if you're not familiar with a Tazarac, is look that up as well. Um, so that's a good visual explanation of what dimension and time and how time bends and slows down around large masses. Einstein talked about the theory of relativity. So, for example, in the movie Interstellar, <clears throat> they go through a porthole or dimensional. Einstein Rosen uh, Rosen Bridge is what it's called in science. It's a theory, right? And they're trying to prove that right now. And Skinwalker Ranch, if you're not watching the, the Secrets of Skinwalker Ranch on the History Channel, I highly recommend it. Uh, it's in its fourth season, and they are producing some very eye-opening scientific method uh, with some of the smartest people on the planet. Now, it's a series, but it's a documentary series. So it's not made for television for entertaining, even though it's entertaining as hell. But they're starting to demonstrate that there is some sort of portal, some sort of concept that we don't understand, um, an anomaly, a paranormal anomaly that's taken place above the ranch, so much that this last episode, the military was, was involved watching them. And that this is a private ranch, so it's not, you know, the military shouldn't be there. So if you want to see a visual construct of what time being is a flat circle and time is, is, is not linear, right? Time is not a linear thing. Uh, then check out Interstellar and they'll break down to where they go through this wormhole portal. They're in a different time zone, a different dimension. So time works differently back on Earth, which Matthew McConaughey, in order to save the planet, leaves his daughter behind in order to save the planet. And he has to make a choice based on the theory of relativity to set down on a planet to rescue one of the astronauts who they feel is still alive. And when they set down on this planet for four hours, in a different dimension where earth is 10 years in those four hours here 10 years has passed on earth so his daughter now is 10 years older than what she was when he left and he has to make that conscious choice knowing that she's going to be older even though he was on this planet for four hours so that tells you that time is wonky time is not linear time is more of a rotational and that's where we talk about it being a flat circle now the other kicker is the guy they left up on the ship to go down to the planet for four hours um, they were only supposed to go down there for an hour and got stuck and ended up being down, down there for four hours. The guy they left on the ship had been going around the planet for 26 years. So imagine that being there for 26 years and they were only down there. So when they come back up to the ship, he's aged 26 years and they've only aged four hours. So it's kind of like, 
but it's a good visual if you want to have the visual of what I'm talking about. So that's what we have for today. Uh, again, thank you, Misty, for the awesome coffee and the beautiful coffee cup. I appreciate you. I appreciate anybody that sends me stuff, swag, cards, coffee cups, coffee. Uh, and so we'll get ready for the cafe. Uh, but I wanted to give you your crystal and your quote from today. So today's crystal is called Leptolite. It's about entering the chill zone. And what this is, it's when freaking out or to prevent that, put the phone on do not disturb hold Lepidolite in each palm and let it just, and just be yourself for five minutes. Relax the muscles between your shoulder blades, lengthen through your breaths and let go of all the drama. It wasn't yours to begin with anyway. So this is called Lepidolite and it's a lithium infused mica with rose and lavender uh, hued spa vibes. Now it's interesting because I was just watching on 60 minutes last night about the revolution, the industrial revolution of lithium batteries. Uh, there's a place down in California where I was watching a story and there's a, um, a place down in California that is uh, really going to transform resources for lithium batteries. And lithium batteries are what's used in the electronic, uh, the electric vehicles like Tesla's uh, Tesla uh, vehicles, um, the lithium battery. We, we get a lot of our lithium from out of country like China. Um, our microchips are made in Taiwan. That's going to be a whole nother conflict based on resources. But we have, uh, we're going to start processing at a higher lithium base, but we're doing it in a way that we take from the earth, take the lithium out, and then put it back into the earth. So we're very working uh, earth friendly. We're working in a symbiotic relationship with the earth. So it was funny that I pulled this because I just watched the 60 Minutes special, and this has parts of lithium in it. But it's about entering your chill zone and let go of some of the drama that's not yours to hold. That's why I don't watch the news much. I'll, I'll keep abreast of what's going on, but I don't watch hardcore news anymore. I just can't. It's it's not, it doesn't benefit my higher self. Definitely doesn't help me to get to my higher self and my perspective when I'm constantly reading about the violence and the drama and the politics. I've been talking about this for four years. Y'all. If you know my work, you follow my work, you follow my podcast, you can go back and re-listen to them if you want. I've talked about it. It's happening. The Roaring Twenties are here. A renaissance is here after a major pandemic, which I said would happen. Uh, and you know, it's um, it's part of the journey. It's part of this time is a flat circle uh, because we are repeating certain things that remind me pre-World War II. And um, I have hope for our future. I was talking to my buddy's uh, son and he's in college. And, uh, you know, I said, you're at, you know, it, does, it may not seem like it's a good time to be alive right now for you and where you're going and trying to get your degree. But actually, I think it is. The industries that are going to change as we move to space, as we move through our technology, we're going to grow more in our technology with AI and robotics and flying cars in the next 30 years than we have the last 300 years. That's a huge thing about it. That's a renaissance by nature. That's happening. Said, this is a good time because you're going to witness people living on the moon, people going to Mars, the discovery of extraterrestrial beings and extra dimensional um, you know, UFOs and UAPs. And I know some of you watching like, yeah, okay. I've had my own experiences and I share that. And then again, you, you can subscribe to it if you've had your own experiences or you can call bullshit and say that's, you know, that's a conspiracy theory. But it's also one of the oldest conspiracy theories in mankind is the we're not alone concept in the universe. So your quote for today is actually, I pulled from a book called What Not to Say. So this is a comprehensive, um, a comprehensive of the worst possible things you can, uh, you can utter aloud. So talking about avoiding drama, talk about avoiding worry and fear, because that's what humans create, is what not to say on a plane. And because I was just on a plane and I've been on planes before where people, you know, during the, 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 the pandemic didn't want to wear a mask and, you know, got very, you know, unruly. So, so this is what not to say on a plane. This is your quote for this week, your crystal and your quote. Can I use your underseat space? I may need to borrow your vomit bag. Nothing calms me down like talking and talking. There's a pretty good chance migrating birds will be in our flight path. I'm um, thinking of the movie where that plane with Tom Hanks, to, based on the true story, the pilot, and the, they took off on the bird strike and they lost both their engines have to let, handle land in the Hudson. Uh, so that's something you probably shouldn't say. Uh, does that look like a crack in the wing to you? <laughs> uh, I get nervous on planes. So I apologize now for my uh, um, alcoholic blackout. Do you think they fixed that problem with the engine? Want some of my an anchovy and Limburger sandwich? Ooh, that actually sounds gross. I'm much more comfortable with the armrest up. 
don't do that. I, I had a lady do that. I'm like, no, I like it down. That's my space. And I paid for this space. And she was like, she was all offended. I'm like, Hey, it's my armrest too. So it's my space. I paid for it. I don't want it up. She just wanted more room. She was, she was, uh, she was a bigger lady. So I was trying to be nice. And, and, but at the same time, you can't be sitting on my lap either because you didn't pay for my seat. Uh, so no, you can't use my, you can't put that armrest up. Uh, can I sleep on your shoulder? No, you cannot sleep on my shoulder. And I've had people, I travel a lot and I've had people in the past where they're just, you know, and I'm sure you, you've, you've all seen it to where somebody's just kind of drifting off and then they kind of fall on with their, you know, their big neck pillow or, and you, you finally, you, you just gotta, you know, either push them away or be like, Hey, you need to go that way. Or, you know, so those are things not to say on an airplane for this week. Um, I won't be on the air next week uh, for Metaphysical Mocha Mondays. I might try, I'm gonna be out of country. Uh, I am uh, traveling to uh, San Jose, Los Cabos to get some vitamin D, to celebrate life, to celebrate this, you know, talking about uh, time being a, a linear, uh, a flat circle, to celebrate life and to celebrate, you know, um, transformation and healing and forgiveness. Um, but I was going to say before I end here, I know we're a little over, but thanks for hanging out with me today. But I'm going to go back to what uh, that, uh, that Jung pa Pablo said, that truth will set you free but first it will make you uncomfortable. And I teach that in my spiritual development group. I always tell my, my tribe, you know, get comfortable being uncomfortable uh, because we're trying to push you to your higher self. And it's usually through conflict. It can be through struggle. It can be through loss. It can be through tragedy. It can be through a funeral. These are the things that help you to ascend and to transform to that higher self. Especially if I've got to repeat this, if literally if, if reincarnation is real, and uh, time is indeed a flat circle, and I've got to come back and continuously re repeat this. I want to say yes to everything. I want to, you know, say if there's if you don't risk it, there's no biscuit. Because if I'm coming back, I want to be happy as I can until that. Because there's a lot of stuff to find, you know, um, uh, negativity in and depression and misery loves company, right? So don't go down that path. Try to find the good in the day. Always imagine the good things coming to you. And you have bad moments in the day, but then it doesn't have to ruin your day. Like I had a bad, I could have said I had a bad day. No, I had a bad moment when I knelt down to get that golf ball and uh, went down into some ragweed that blew my leg up. Literally, I've got welts all over my left leg. And I, you know, I washed it and put some lotion on it. It's going to heal. But that was just a bad moment. I'm not going to let it ruin my entire day of golf. And I didn't. I just kept going. So it's a mindset. It's a focus. It's a thought. And remember, your thoughts become your words. So pay attention to your thoughts because your words can drive you on your choices and your free will and your habits. And that can also, you know, lean right into um, your happiness and your joy and your healing and your forgiveness. So um, next, uh, today is the eighth. So the 15th, I'll try to come in from Mexico if I can. Uh, if not, happy Mother's Day to all the beautiful mothers out there. Uh, I will be on the air this Wednesday for Inspired Living. Uh, we are now a top rated inspirational podcast to follow. Uh, top 100 now. I think we're about 28 this week. It fluctuates. We go between 28 and 19, depending on reviews, downloads, following. Uh, the show can be streamed through your whatever your favorite podcasting platform is today. Uh, Inspired Living uh, has that, that ranking now. We also go through Alexa, just say Alexa, or you have an Echo Pod, you can say Alexa, open up Inspired Living Podcast. That will stream the latest podcast where I talk about consciousness uh, you can also say through your Alexa, I have an app called Positive Living that I've done recordings for. This year, I focused on a series of meditations to help with meditations and mindset and your thoughts. So if you want to have those tips, just say Alexa, open up Positive Living, and that will start the app to get different um, mantras, you know, mindful reminders, if you will, for your journey. So I hope that you'll check those out. Uh, and then I'll be on the air this Wednesday at 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern live for uh, Inspired Living Radio. Uh, we have a guest uh, right off the top of my head. I can't remember. Um, I have to do my write-up after I'm done here uh, for the show. Uh, but that'll be out on the Intuitive Prospector page, the Inspired Living Facebook page. Um, that, that'll all be on my Instagram. So you can follow the social media to see who's coming up and what topics we're talking about. Uh, <clears throat> for the life of me, I apologize. I can't remember. It's a doctor, but I can't remember the, what concept and what topic we're going to be talking about. But I guarantee you, it'll be informative, it'll be inspiring, it'll be motivating, it'll be things that make you go, hmm. Uh, so that's why we do inspire living. <clears throat> so uh, voice is getting a little clocked up. That must mean I must have to work for spirit, uh, maybe do some mediumship over in the Q&A cafe. So thanks for hanging out with me today. Uh, again, just the concept, if you want to learn more about just time and look at time from a different perspective, 
uh, time is a flat circle. Think of that beer can that I was just talking about. You crush that beer can. It's, you know, it's a big beer can crush it down. It's now just a flat circle. That's how I want to think how that's how I want you to think about your life, your journey, what we repeat, uh, you know, deja vu history repeats itself just in a different way. Time is a flat circle. Um, you know, what else? The, what we resist persists, the lesson repeats until it completes. So all those good nuggets uh, that we're all prospecting for. And again, if you want to, you know, catch an upcoming workshop or get a booking, uh, just go right here to marklaneheart.com. I'll update my website uh, hopefully this week before I leave for Mexico uh, to have my book uh, on the main page. You, again, you can just go to Inspired Living, or I'm sorry, you can go to Amazon and type in uh, Between Worlds Reflections with Best American Psychics, and it should come up either in the digital Kindle version or the paperback, and then the Audible will be coming. And then I'll have physical copies here uh, that'll be, once they go to full print, I'll have a bunch of copies set here uh, that I can send out if people want that. Um, also on my website, subscribe, because uh, I'm selling, uh, I have a store now where you can get some CBD for the time, uh, for calm or focus to help with the mindset, to help with you know, I battle depression and anxiety and have for years to work through that. So you don't succumb to suicidal thoughts or suicidal tendencies, because uh, that is all connected. Uh, so I sell that on my website, Lavender Love. Um, t-shirts, fun t-shirts. If you want a nice 20% discount, use the code off my website. Uh, not this t-shirt per se, but fun zany t-shirts that you've seen me wear in the past on the shows. You can get now discounts and get really fun t-shirts. Uh, so I've got a promo on that. Uh, shout out to my Kraken who won last night. So we'll be at the game Tuesday. And um, I just hope that you have a, you know, a great rest of your week and that you are thinking about your life and your journey. Why are you here? What's your purpose? What's your passion? How's a plan to achieve the happiness that you strive for? And that, that I'm sure that you want to have in your life, happiness and joy, especially with all the stuff that's going on around in our journey. So um, again, get some of that Lepo Delight. And we'll see you over uh, in the Q&A Cafe or over on the airwaves of Inspired Living this Wednesday. Until our next soul adventure together, be kind, be caring, be compassionate. There's a lot to that, you know, it doesn't hurt to be compassionate for another person. We're all the same. You know, we all have, we have more in common than we do apart. And we're one species. So let's, let's celebrate each other. And, and uh, you know, we can do that through kindness and compassion and helping a, you know, a fellow being out, be a human being. Um, and of course, until our next soul adventure together, dare to dream, dare to explore, dare to live. And I hope you discover that diamond within. And I'll see you here in just a few minutes for the Q&A Cafe and about two minutes at the top of the hour at nine o'clock. Again, welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome to my meetup uh, group who uh, a few of you RSVP to be here today. So welcome, welcome, welcome. And again, thank you to Misty for the beautiful coffee cup and the coffee, which I am thoroughly enjoying. And let's move over to the Q&A Cafe. I'll be right back in two minutes. Have a great rest of your day, everybody. Namaste. One planet, 7.3 billion people, only one you. Life offers us many opportunities and learning experiences. Are you ready to explore and discover this beautiful planet, the life and energy all around us, the spiritual world, and what is unseen, along with your own personal soul adventure? Mark Lanehart, the intuitive prospector, is the spiritual connection you have been prospecting for. Internationally known as a tested and professional clairvoyant medium and spiritual advisor, Mark's work as a metaphysical teacher, medical instructor, radio show host, inspirational writer, and hiking guide are here to help you on a journey of self-discovery, healing, inspiration, education, and a whole lot of spiritual awesomeness. Dare to dream. Dare to explore. Dare to live. For more information on Mark's spiritual practice in Seattle, Washington, Please visit marklanehart.com or internet search The Intuitive Prospector.